Okay, this is the amplifier PCB out of the speaker. The mains fuse kept blowing, which was this one here. So I powered it up slowly off my variac because I wasn't sure if it was the mains, you know, the actual transformer that was faulty or something that the transformer was driving. So um, I established that it was the uh, transformer. The the problem with replacing the transformer is this, the, the faulty ones here, it's just like, it just says who it's made for and nothing else being remotely useful. So buying a transformer to replace a faulty one that's been custom made as that one will have been is always a bit of a tricky one. One of the ways to check it is the, these are the main power splice moving capacitors and they're rated at 35 volts. And when you multiply, when if you get a transformer that's like say got a 20 volt winding out, you know, output, AC output, but after you put it through a rectifier and hooked it up to the smoothing capacitors, the output, the final output voltage will be around about 1.414 times the input, you know, times what the transformer's secondary output is. So we don't want 35 volts we don't want to go above 35 volts because that'll exceed you know that will damage these capacitors so you wouldn't normally expect to find the capacitor running at the maximum voltage written on the side of it so probably looking at a voltage around about 30 volts to be running on this uh, particular unit so then buying off the shelf transformer is always a bit of a tricky one because you're going to get they tend to be sort of voltages that aren't quite the voltages you need so the ones i've looked at were Sort of plus or minus 18 well two 18 volt windings and or 225 volt windings the 25 volt windings will give you about 35 volts on these so that's too high because the other thing while you could change those and these amplifier chips are rated for quite high voltages um, the actual all this circuitry down here there's quite a lot of op amps down here um, and they're actually powered from their own separate power supply. This is a sort of positive 15 volt regulator and a negative 15 volt regulator. So the, and the data sheet of those tells you what the maximum input voltage can be. So you need to kind of make sure that you don't exceed the input voltage to those either. So you've got to find a transformer that's going to be about right. Um, so what I've got is probably less voltage than the one that was fitted in it originally, but that's kind of life really that's the way it is so at the moment it's kind of spread all over my table because i was testing it so i've soldered all i've just soldered wires onto uh, different bits of it so i can actually get at it easily rather than screwing it or putting it all back in the box and then finding it does something else doesn't work so this is my simple little loudspeaker load that i've hooked up to it i've got a couple of scope probes so i can monitor the output see what's going on the the, um, the voltage selector is going to be a bit tricky I might just bypass that because I'm not quite entirely sure how they've wired that up and I'll probably have to sort of cut these connectors off and fit the uh, new transformer into the you know to use these existing connectors so yeah it's an interesting design I've noticed if you put like um, you know, like the, the all this crossover circuitry is quite effective if you put a one kilohertz sine wave into it from a signal generator you don't get anything out of the tweeter until you crank it up to around about like six kilohertz and then it starts you know you start getting the output moving across i imagine that's set by the dip switches and stuff but i haven't really delved into the manual obviously there's no circuit diagram whatsoever for this board but it's old it uses old old school electronics with quite a bit of surface mount on there but fundamentally it's it's not a class d amp which in my book makes it infinitely more repairable than a lot of the modern um electronics let's have a quick look at the active crossover on this board because this amplifier has got well, the, the pcb in this thing has got a separate amplifier for the tweeter and the other one is used for driving the base stroke mid-range unit the uh, the circuitry on the board axle is like an active filter on the board that so the 
tweeter output only gets the uh, the higher frequencies. So I hooked the scope up to the output of each of the amplifiers, and the top trace is the tweeter driver, and the lower trace is the mid-range bass driver. So let's see how this works with different frequencies going into it. So the single generator is set for one kilohertz, and all the all the power to the speaker is coming out of the bass mid-range driver at one kilohertz. So let's go up to five kilohertz. Okay, so this is now at five kilohertz, and all the powers now, well, most of the powers now have been driven out to the tweeter amplifier, which is on the top trace, and the you know the main woofer mid-range driver is getting a lot smaller signal. So let's set the frequency to yeah, let's go down to three kilohertz. So at three kilohertz, we're getting a sort of more you know the, the, it's been split more equally. There's still less going to the tweeter output than the main amp. There's some dip switches on this that set the kind of crossover points. Let's go to uh, let's go a bit more radical. Set it to uh, say 14 kilohertz. Okay, so that's 14 kilohertz. And there's nothing at all on the lower trace. Right, this is the PCB and new transformer fitted into the um, the new the speaker. Basically, it's a the, the whole back panel is an aluminium casting. Well, in fact, the whole speaker is an aluminium casting. So the weird-looking long bolts on this are actually used to push the actual driver units, the you know the the main speaker and the tweeter, against the front panel. So you uh, you can you can sort of tighten those up from the back panel. You need one of those security tool things to do it. But basically, you just as you screw that in it pushes against the back of the speaker it doesn't seem like a bit of a sort of bodgy way of doing it and the big problem is the uh, the, the bolt that attaches it that pushes against the back of the tweeter as soon as the bolt gets anywhere near the back of the tweeter the magnet in the tweeter just pulls it away from the front panel and attaches it to the uh, you know, to this long bolt which then knocks it completely out of alignment and it doesn't line up properly with the uh, hole in the front panel so it takes a bit of jiggery pokery and a, well mostly it requires a bit of masking tape or something stuck on the front panel across the front of it to hold it in position uh, long enough so you can get the, the bolt done up but um, ultimately that's it the uh, new transformer repaired it and it all seemed to work okay so uh, that one's done thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel for more videos